Hello. In this video, we are going to see the effect of uh, emitter degeneration on the performance of the BJT DFAM. I have drawn a BJT differential pair, and notice that I have added um, two emitter resistors labeled RE connected to the emitter of uh, Q1 and Q2, respectively. Q1 being the transistor on the left, Q2 the transistor on the right. Um, again, since this is a differential amplifier, uh, the input is taken differentially across um, the base of Q1 and the base of Q2, so the uh, differential input signal will be equal to V in 1 minus V in 2, and then the output can be taken uh, differentially across the collectors, it will be V out 1 minus V out 2, or if we are building a single-ended DFAMP, we will just take the output uh, directly from collector of Q2. Uh, I have also added a current source in the tail for biasing purposes. And since uh, we have seen that the output resistance of that current source is going to affect the performance of the circuit, I have modeled the output resistance of the current source as that resistor R in parallel with the tail current source. Uh, again, that's not part of uh, an additional component in my circuit. That R is just part of the uh, current source connected to the tail, is its output resistance. Um, all right, and we have seen uh, that the DC transfer characteristic for a differential pair looks something like this. Uh, we created normalized uh, curves. Uh, in the case of the output, it will be the collector output normalized by uh, the tail current. So I see divided by I. And on my x-axis, I had the differential input voltage normalized by the thermal voltage, which is around 25 millivolts at room temperature. And we saw that uh, this looks something as follows. We had one curve for, let's maybe in blue, uh, we had for IC1, or IC1 divided by I, we had something that initially uh, for um, high values of V in 1, when V in 1 is higher than V in 2, let's say by 1 volt, uh, we have that all the current gets steered on the left side of the circuit, all the current, um, all the tail current is flowing through the Q1 side, uh, and then as we approach, uh, the differential voltage approaches 0, I'm going to put that mark right here, Uh, then both cur the current will distribute equally between the two branches, the Q1 branch and the Q2 branch. And then as I keep uh, decreasing V in 1 with respect to V in 2, uh, then all of the current gets steered towards the Q2 side and the current on the Q1 side becomes zero. So this will be the IC1 curve. And then I will have a similar IC2 curve, but opposite. Whereas initially, uh, for large values of V in 1, the current through the Q2 branch is 0, and then um, as the voltage uh, V in 2 keeps increasing with respect to V in 1, then all of the current gets steered towards IC2 uh, until it, the overall uh, collector current is flowing through that branch. And so since we are normalizing that current by the overall quiescent current or the current of the current source uh, through my tail, this will reach a value of 1, this will be 0.5. When exactly both, uh, both currents are equal and they are half of the overall current. Um, and that's it. And we said that the linear region uh, lies more or less in between these points. Typically we don't take it all the way to the extreme. Uh, but anyway, but we can see that that's the region where there is a relationship between the output current and the input voltage, and it's a linear relationship. Uh, what's the effect of adding those emitter resistors? Well, uh, by adding the emitter resistors, just as happened with the uh, common emitter amplifier, once you add the emitter resistors, you're increasing uh, the overall resistance in the emitter, so you're decreasing your gain. Uh, those emitter resistors, they're also called degeneration resistors, and the reason why they're called so 
is because they introduce negative feedback. Um, and the effect of introducing negative feedback in the circuit is an effect of reducing the gain. Now, there are some uh, things to be gained from a reduction in gain, and the first one is an increase in stability. Um, we have seen how adding that emitter resistor already in the common emitter amplifier increases the temperature stability of the circuit, um, as well as there is an increase in the linear range. How is that so? Well, notice that if we decrease the gain, it means that we are decreasing uh, the slope of these DC transfer curves in the linear region. And so if we decrease that slope, this is what's going to happen for my IC one. It will look something more or less like this. Right? And for my IC two, something like that. So basically I am, oops, it's not really doing much justice, but basically I am uh, reducing the slope and therefore increasing the region uh, over which this circuit behaves as a linear amplifier. So basically now my linear region is larger. Maybe I should have drawn the other one in blue so that we can see the difference. So this was... This is linear region um, for case one and this will be oops, not purple but red my linear region for case two what does that mean well it basically means that i have increased the range of input voltages that I can successfully amplify with this amplifier. Uh, in the first case, without the emitter resistances, it may be, you know, uh, uh, we said it was going to be uh, VT halves, what we consider a small signal. Once I have added the emitter resistor, I may increase that range. So instead of just having plus minus 12.5 millivolts, I may have 20 millivolts, 30 millivolts, etc. And so basically, I'm going to label my curves. Uh, the first case is going to be for, I'm going to put it in blue. So this will be the family of curves when I times RE is equal to zero, since the emitter resistance is equal to zero. And the second case might be where I times RE is equal to 10, let's say. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and write down some of those uh, characteristics. So effect of introducing emitter degeneration. And so we have uh, in the pros, on the, on the positive side, we have increased linear range. We have increased uh, stability. We can see that if we perform, let's say, a simulation, uh, a temperature sweep, temperature stability analysis. Um, and we're going to see now when we look at the equations that we have also increased uh, input resistance the differential input resistance, which is also consistent with what happened uh, in the common emitter amplifier when we introduced an emitter resistor. The trade-offs is that we have reduced our gain. Um, and then that one is typically not too big of a deal because uh, we prefer stability rather than gain, and we prefer um, a larger linear range rather than a very large gain, typically. Uh, but one of the trade-offs is that we have reduced uh, the CMRR. We're going to see that in a second. And so essentially, it, you know, that's a, a big measure of circuit performance for a differential amplifier. And, so, and that will be for single-ended output because 
as we have seen for the balanced output TFAMP, uh, the CMRR was ideally equal to zero. Those are the main uh, pros and the main trade-offs. Uh, let's take a look at the actual equations for uh, gain, input resistance, output resistance, CMRR, and see how those get affected, each one of those, uh, when we introduce this emitter resistance. We are going to see it both for the balanced output case as well as the single-ended output case. So I'm going to put number one here, my balanced output, and my number two, single-ended output. All right, and so we have the first thing was the common mode gain. You see M. And we had seen that uh, the common mode gain for my balanced output without the emitter of the generator resistors was equal to zero simply because it was equal to um, the, the differential output voltage VL1 minus VL2 divided by the differential by the common mode input voltage. Since the differential output voltage was equal to zero, then it followed that the common mode gain was equal to zero. And that does not change if we include the meter degeneration resistor. So that will still be equal to zero. Ideally, we have seen that the mismatches are going to cause um, a non-zero value for the common mode uh, gain of a balanced output. But for now, we are going to exclude mismatches from our calculations. Um, in the case of the single-ended output, we had that the common mode gain was equal to negative RC divided by little r plus 2R. And this was the case without the emitter degeneration resistor. So we can see um, we had gotten this from the, uh, the, from the half circuit. Uh, and we had seen uh, negative uh, collector resistance divided by emitter resistance. The overall resistance to the co connected to the collector was RC. The overall resistance connected to the emitter, when we didn't have emitter degeneration resistors, which is little re plus 2R, because if we split uh, the resistor associated with the current source into two branches, we have that two, two R resistors connected in parallel will give us the R resistance that's... Uh, that's indicated here when we join the branches. Uh, now that we have added an RE resistor, it follows logically that our equation must be modified to include that. So the overall limit of resistance is now little re plus capital R plus 2R. So fairly reasonable. Um, still, we have uh, both RE and 2R affecting our common mode gain. And notice that uh, the, um, the larger those values are, the smaller our common mode gain is going to be. Uh, the next thing was the differential gain. And my differential gain, if you recall, for the balanced output was equal to uh, negative RC divided by little re. So negative overall collector resistance divided by overall limited resistance. In this case, the overall limited resistance is little re plus re. And so the differential gain equation just gets modified by that amount. In the case of the single-ended output, we had that the differential gain was half the differential gain of the uh, balanced output. And it was also um, positive and so in this case, it's going to be no different. It's just going to be RC divided by 2, little re plus capital R. So far, so good. Uh, the next thing is the common mode rejection ratio, which was the ratio of those two, CMRR. In the case of the balanced output, we had said uh, the CMRR is going to be equal to the ratio uh, of the differential gain to the common mode gain. And so, in the case of the balanced output, is ideally equal to infinity, even though we have seen that uh, when you have mismatches in your circuit, uh, then the CMRR is going to be affected by those mismatches. In the case of the single-ended output, we saw that the CMRR was affected by the tail resistor. Um, it was equal to AD divided by ACM. And uh, we can just... Uh, enter 
the ratios of those expressions that we have here. Uh, so AD is equal to RC divided by 2, RE plus RE. So we have RC divided by 2, RE plus RE, divided by ACM, which is negative um, RC divided by RE plus RE plus 2R. We can see that our our C's are going to cancel, and so we're going to be left with um, little re plus re plus 2r divided by 2 re little re plus re. I can, and I haven't written this, but normally we take the absolute value to calculate CMR. And so I can rewrite that as follows, little re plus re divided by 2 re plus re plus 2r divided by 2 little re plus re. Well, my 2s will cancel as well. And now, uh, this is just 1 half, the first term, so this will be 1 half. Plus, and this is something that is going to be typically much larger than one half. So, I'll write that. This is much larger than one half. And therefore, I can approximate my CMRR as simply the second term. I'm going to neglect the one half term as being approximately equal to R divided by little e plus capital R. So again, we can see that CMRR is going to be affected by both uh, my tail resistor uh, very heavily, as well as my emitter resistor. Um, the larger my emitter resistor, the lower my CMRR. And so that's one of the trade-offs that we wrote up there, reduce CMRR. Uh, and that's going to be especially in the case of the single-ended output. Uh, next parameter of interest was the input resistance. Now, the common mode input resistance is not going to be altered by the introduction of that emitter resistor, but the differential input resistance will be. And uh, we have seen uh, the differential input resistance was the same uh, for a balanced output or differential output case, and it was equal to twice little re. Um, and in this case, since we have now added capital RE, when we go from the path from V in 1 to V in 2, now we not only encounter uh, the little RE of Q1 and the little RE of Q2, but in series with that we'll have, will be um, capital RE connected to transistor Q1 and the capital RE connected to transistor Q2. And so the overall series resistance there is 2 times little RE plus RE. And again, that's the same uh, regardless of where we take the output, because this is something that affects the input, not the output. Um, and the output resistance is not changed. Uh, because the emitter resistors are connected to the emitter and the output is taken at the collector. And so it remains the same for, um, for both circuits. So it's going to be uh, twice RC in parallel with little RO in the case of the balanced output and the RC in parallel with little RO in the case of the single-ended output. This is more or less um, how the introduction of emitter degeneration affects uh, the BJT differential pair. Thank you.